There's a famous saying from David Lynch's cult TV series, Twin Peaks. The owls are not what they seem. This statement is pretty relevant when it comes to SCP-3035 and what it claims to be. The object was first seen by Richard Hoffmayer, who's currently a patient in a psychiatric hospital. Before being institutionalized, he worked at a pest control company. On the job one day, he arrived at a huge grain warehouse. Its owners wanted to get rid of a cockroach infestation. Hoffmayer took out the pesticide sprayer and was about to get to work when he saw his reflection in the window opposite him. At first, Hoffmayer thought it was a mirror, but the reflection started to move in different directions even though Hoffmayer was standing still. Richard was startled, then he turned and ran only to meet himself again. Hoffmayer's clone was behaving strangely, pretending to hold the spray gun in his hands and its mouths made sounds imitating the pesticide sprayer. Hoffmayer dropped all of his equipment and headed to the exit, but there was a group of 20 identical Richard Hoffmayers waiting for him at the door, and 10 more Richards came up behind him. Out of fear, Hoffmayer tried to hit one of them. His fist punched through the clone's shoulder with such ease, it was as if he was made out of cardboard. What happened next remains a mystery. Richard told this story after he woke up in the local hospital. He was found unconscious at the warehouse, and they immediately called for an ambulance. At first, doctors thought these hallucinations were caused by the toxic pest control chemicals used by Richard's firm. In the end, Hoffmeyer was diagnosed with schizophrenia and he was held involuntarily. Later, Richard admitted to being insane and said that the large group of clones was nothing more than an illusion. But that was not the case. Hoffmeyer really did see over 30 copies of himself. After all, the same thing happened to three janitors, five movers, and the owner of the warehouse himself. Upon learning this, the SCP Foundation quickly dispatched two special agents, Marlon Fisher and Jake Krause. The agents solved the case in a week, or at least that's what they thought at the time. They thought the wheat was to blame. Foundation staff noticed that a vast quantity of wheat in the warehouse had been infected with ergo. Ergo, a fungal disease that affects wheat, produces lysergic acid, which is used to synthesize LSD. Fisher and Krauss were sure that this was the root of the whole anomaly. For some reason, the psychotropic substance is synthesized independently from ergo. Warehouse workers end up inhaling the drug, eventually suffering from hallucinations. However, chemical analysis has shown it doesn't quite happen like this, and that the agents were mistaken in their assessment. On top of that, all of the employees had the same hallucinations. They all saw their own clothes. This means that the agents had to investigate further. Fisher and Krauss split up and took another look around the warehouse. Not finding anything, the partners left. On the way back, Agent Krauss started acting very strangely. All of Agent Fisher's questions and remarks were met with nonsensical, incoherent phrases. However, when Fisher's cell phone rang, he realized that it wasn't Krauss sitting next to him, but something else. Because the real Krauss was talking to him on the phone. Indignant that Fisher had left him at the warehouse, Agent Fisher screeched to a halt and kicked the pseudo Krauss out of the car. Then, Fisher got out of the car and pointed his gun at the imposter, demanding an explanation. Krauss's clone, in response, raised his hands and pointed it at Fisher. As his hand slowly began to turn into a gun, Fisher immediately fired several shots at Krauss. The imposter dropped dead. Fisher went back to the warehouse to get the real Krauss. Meanwhile, the dead doppelganger was sent off for examination. The autopsy showed that the pseudo Krauss was practically empty inside with no internal organs. According to the analysis, his outer shell was some sort of chitinous casing, like an insect. Foundation investigators made several hypotheses. The first, someone was making realistic humanoid chitin castings, allowing a person to commit various crimes disguised as someone else. But this theory had its weaknesses. All of the clones had appeared spontaneously and in a large group which led the investigators to another assumption. They hypothesized that inside the warehouse, there was an anomalous device that creates countless copies of anyone who comes inside. However, there still remained the mystery. Why were there copies made of chitin? Then the researchers came to the most probable hypothesis, that these clones are insects. It's possible that certain insects have, over time, learned how to mimic virtually any living organism. Now, they just have to find out which ones. Fisher and Krauss returned to the warehouse and collected all the insects they could find. They brought 90 mosquitoes, 6,000 flies, 1,200 cockroaches, and 17 species of moths. However, the next day, all the insects had turned into mosquitoes. They eventually turned to researcher Jessica Springer, who had been leading the investigation of the anomalous insects. The insects were placed in a huge, transparent room without a single opening, making it impossible for them to escape. 
Now, they just had to figure out which species had the ability to mimic other living organisms. Springer spent seven months conducting these observations. The researcher noted that the anomalous objects always return to the form of a cockroach after a transformation. As such, the cockroach is now considered the primary form of SCP-3035, or as the Foundation scientists call them, science bugs. As it turns out, these anomalous creatures don't pose a threat to humans, at least not usually. First, the science bugs observe other living organisms, then they take their shape. However, they don't fully become the creature they choose to mimic. Springer's experiment with venomous spiders confirmed this. The investigator released a Sydney funnel web spider, one of the most venomous in the world, into the room of cockroaches. A partition was placed between the spider and the insects in order to prevent it from biting the anomalous cockroaches and eating them. Within a few hours, all of the SCP-3035 objects had taken the form of the dangerous spider. But their behavior was completely inconsistent with the spider's own. They didn't have any venom glands either. You could pick them up safely without fearing of risking your life or health. SCP-3035 objects belong to the Paraplaneta Americana subspecies, otherwise known as the American Cockroach. The speed of their transformation largely depends on the species they're disguising themselves as. They're able to assume the appearance of an arthropod or other insect within one minute of contact. The cockroaches need 10 minutes to turn into a fish or a bird, and up to 30 minutes to turn into a mammal. Imitating a human is the most difficult task for science bugs. Beetles' nervous systems often cannot distinguish things like clothes, accessories, or tools as being separate from the person themselves. If there are technical personnel working near SCP-3035 objects, the science bugs turn into electricians with screwdrivers and other tools fused into their hands. Nevertheless, if one of the cockroaches has already copied the image of another creature, it makes mimicry easier for the other insects. In this case, the transformation takes no more than one minute, regardless of the complexity of the species that the science bugs are mimicking. However, SCP-3035 had to be isolated after an employee shooting range was opened near the science bugs holding area. The fact is, when they imitate other creatures, they pay most attention to mimicking their movements. The cockroaches perceived any moving object as a living organism, so the bullets flying across the shooting range seemed like just another type of insect to the cockroaches, and they began to adopt their appearance and mass. Of course, they didn't have the density of lead, but at the speed of bullet travels, even shit becomes a deadly weapon. Lab assistant Jacob Jacobson was killed by a science bug when one of them transformed into a bullet and flew into his eye. The cockroach's velocity was enough to break the protective glass. Research was deemed no longer safe, so all staff left the enclosure. This area was later named Zone 173. Zone 173 has two entrances, A and B. Management made the decision to block off entrance A with a four meter thick slab of concrete. Entrance B is a system of vacuum tubes. Foundation employees use it to send and receive parcels from Zone 173. During the investigation, the cockroaches learned to imitate many human actions, including packing and sending parcels. Namely, the cockroaches were sending out various office supplies. They sent keyboards, computer mice, notebooks, tablets, etc. When the science bugs got to Springer's old office, they started sending out her lab equipment, syringes, test tubes, and microscope parts. One day, they played a prank and sent out their own eggs. They were, of course, immediately destroyed by security guards. If an individual SCP-3035 object makes its way directly through the system, it must also be destroyed immediately. Before Zone 173 was blocked off from visitors, it was equipped with a large number of cameras so that Foundation employees could surveil for cockroaches. Many of these observations have been alarming. So far, the cockroaches have increased 15% in size, and their imitations are quickly approaching perfection. They've learned to mimic the behavior of living organisms organisms with higher accuracy, and this change manifests itself on a chemical level. After a large group of cockroaches mimicked only one flower in the zone, the level of carbon dioxide gas fell sharply, and the oxygen level on the other hand increased. The biggest mystery for the researchers remains the nature of the anomaly, what allows the cockroaches to copy other living organisms so successfully. DNA analysis of American cockroaches has shown that their genome differs significantly from that of other insects. SCP-3035's genes are also able to mimic the DNA profiles of other organisms, and this means that cockroaches read not only the appearance but also the genetic information of other organisms. This in turn makes them much more dangerous creatures. Science bugs are classified as safe objects by the Foundation, but this is out of pure convention, because if they really were safe, they wouldn't have to be locked up under a layer of concrete put on round-the-clock security. But the most important question is whether this feature is a natural mutation, or if it's the result of a technical intervention in the cockroach genome. Some documents discovered by the Foundation point to the second theory. During World War II, Bermak scientists developed a strategy to divert enemy troops. 
They wanted to create something that could mimic the appearance of Nazi soldiers. It could lure the enemy to the battlefield, and then an airstrike would be launched. This scorched earth tactic provided the desired result. The entire battlefield would be destroyed. The German army wouldn't suffer a loss, only the cockroaches would. However, the prototypes were stolen by American intelligence officers. Once they got to US soil, the science bugs disappeared without a trace, until the case of Richard Hofmeyer. There's a theory that after Kennedy's death, a group of science bugs in the shape of a person took over the presidency instead of a live human being. Kennedy was an inconvenient president for global politics, and as such, all subsequent presidents have been replaced with SCP-3035. This in turn helps to explain a lot of strange things American presidents have done. If that's the case, we can assume that these mimicking beetles are in charge of most other nations too. What do you think? Are there cockroaches among modern global leaders? Write to us in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to our channel to learn more about the objects at the SCP Foundation.